Good evening. I'm Anita Blanton. And I'm Stephanie Harris. Tonight, we celebrate 100 years of Naval Station Norfolk. What started as the Jamestown Exposition in 1907 turned into the largest naval base in the world. Over the month of June, we brought you a series of stories about the history of the Navy, its impact on our local community and overseas. Ten your size, Jen Lewis sat down with several former and current commanding officers to talk about the evolution of the base over the century. You've heard the quote, leaders are not born, they're made. Nowhere is that more true than in the United States Navy. As we celebrate the centennial of Naval Station Norfolk, we reflect on its leadership, those who have guided its growth since 1917. Albert C. Dillingham was the first commander of the Naval Operating Base, as it was known. He actually was a Civil War veteran in the Army, believe it or not. Dillingham is credited with the construction startup of the base. Major growth took place at Norfolk Naval Station during the first two world wars, and it nearly doubled in size during World War II. Another commander of note is Admiral Jackson Parker. In his career, he had actually started as enlisted man and rose all the way to flag rank, which was uh, a tremendous achievement. Admiral Jake Tobin served as commander Naval Base Norfolk from 1990 to 1993, a time when the Navy was reorganizing and developing a regional administration. We really needed to rethink the structure of the regional commanders, of the regional base commanders. Admiral Tobin recommended a system of regional base management in 1993. In 1999, Commander Navy Region Mid-Atlantic was formed, one of the many set up around the country as a result of his influence. One who has risen among the regional ranks is Admiral Mary Jackson. She had her first stint as a shore commanding officer at Naval Station Norfolk. That was a world that I had just believed were, was behind the magic curtain for the first 20 years of my career. Admiral Jackson was the first and so far only female commander of the base. The opportunities for women over the years, and certainly my career, have, have changed significantly. And I've been very, very fortunate to be um, really on the bow wave with several other women as both policy and legal changes have occurred over the years. A century ago, Naval Station Norfolk looked a lot different and smaller. It sat on 474 acres. Now we're 6,200 acres where we have a uh, five billion dollars worth of infrastructure here on the base and have a huge impact to the local economy in addition to the, uh, an impact to the mission of the Navy globally. This is definitely the hub of naval activity so we're very proud of that. As the largest naval installation in the world, Naval Station Norfolk will continue to offer premier service to its sailors, ships and aircraft here at home while protecting our national interests around the world. Jen Lewis, 10 on your side. Naval Station Norfolk kicked off its centennial celebration back in January. Nearly 200 people gathered at the Pennsylvania House for the celebration, including Governor Terry McAuliffe. That's where he signed a proclamation recognizing Naval Station Norfolk for its 100 years of service to the Commonwealth. The base was a product of World War I. In April of 1917, the U.S. government bought the original 474 acres with $1.6 million for development. Over the next six months, the 5th Naval Headquarters, the Naval Operating Base, Naval Training Station, Naval Hospital, and Submarine Station were all established. By Armistice Day in 1918, there were 34,000 enlisted men at the base. Its purposes were training student officers, instructing enlisted sailors in construction, repair and maintenance of aircraft, conducting patrol flights along the eastern seaboard, and experimental work in seaplane operations. It was renamed NAS Norfolk in July of 1921. Join the Navy, see the world. That's the slogan that convinced Joanne Teal to enlist. She also got married, had kids, and made chief. Tenant Your Size Lex Gray spoke with a veteran who witnessed fundamental changes in how the Navy and other sailors treated women. For Joanne Teal, joining the Navy at a time when not many women were in wasn't an act of rebellion, it wasn't about making history. It was impulse. A cousin of mine had been in town, and he just joined the Navy, and he said, why don't you join? And I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. Teal was 20 and working at a car radio factory. Joining the Navy got her out of the factory and out of her small town in western New York. Something to do to make, make a better life, yeah. Teal made a life 
and a whole career. She met her husband in the Navy, traveled overseas, deployed briefly on ships, and made chief. Even though, at her first command, she was shocked to be promoted at all. I was thinking all the time, like, wow, I never thought I'd be a petty officer, you know? And then I retired as a chief. Also remarkable, Teal had two kids. When she joined in 73, women had to get out of the Navy if they got pregnant, and they weren't allowed back in. That changed just in time for Teal, but not for a married couple she was friends with. She got pregnant and got out, and he stayed in. So I often wonder, you know, had she been able to stay in, would she be up there with us as well? Before she retired in 1993, Teal experienced other major changes as well, like the gradual recognition and rejection of sexual harassment. At her first command, Teal remembers sailors lining up to check out the fresh meat. And for a while, working in the kitchen and wearing the regulation skirt uniform, guys used to come watch her and other women work. Were you uncomfortable? Did you feel disrespected? Absolutely, yeah. But it, it, and it's, I guess it was just the, the time, the decade or whatever. By 1985, Teal was serving as a sexual harassment prevention officer. That's a position, a phrase that didn't even exist when she enlisted. It seems weird. It's like, why didn't we have a choice or why didn't we know it was wrong? Still, Teal believes the Navy women of today are even stronger than she was. And she's proud to see so many climbing the ranks. When I made chief was a big uh, milestone for me. Because when I did, there were very few, like a handful of us around. And now there's, oh my gosh, there's captains, there's um, admirals. It's just incredible. I am in awe every time I go someplace and see them all together. Coming up, you'll meet the woman who made it possible for Teal and every other female sailor to serve on ships. I'm Lex Gray, 10 on your side. In September of 1943, there was a load of depth charges being carried from the pier section of the base across what was then the Naval Air Station. They were being dragged on a sled, and it's not entirely clear what happened, but some of the friction of, of the sleds set off the depth charges. Uh, first woman uh, in the Navy in World War II was killed on the Naval base during this explosion. There were uh, scores of people killed. A gigantic crater was blasted. It uh, made a noise that could be heard as, as far away as Suffolk. You know, you see the buildings are, are completely demolished and many airplanes were ruined. If you were alive then, you remember where you were when it happened. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. Are you thinking of selling your home but you're not sure which agent to hire? You have a lot of choices, but really, the choice is simple. Because there's only one agent I would trust to sell my home, go to LonnieBush.com and check out Lonnie's guarantee to sell your home or he will buy it. Lonnie owns a property management company and is always looking for great homes to buy and rent out. Go to LonnieBush.com and get your home sold. Casey Auto Group, home of the Casey Carefree Guarantee. Casey Auto Group wants you to be Casey Carefree, so we're proud to offer the Casey Carefree Guarantee on every new vehicle we sell. With a three-day money-back guarantee, engine, powertrain, parts, and service for life, and oil changes and state inspections for life. Shop our huge selection online, or stop by any one of our six Peninsula locations, and you can be driving Casey Carefree today. What are you waiting for? Casey Auto Group has a three-day money-back guarantee, engine, powertrain, and parts and service for life, and oil changes and state inspections for life. Casey, the only name you need to know. Okay, you're awake, go. Life doesn't stop on the weekend, and neither do you. Always there, for you, for them. You keep going. Husband, dad, hero, and friend. America was built because guys like you have the courage to get out of bed in the morning. When the work is done and the lights are out, we'll be there for you. You can count on it. The Original Mattress Factory. Get a good night's sleep. You've earned it. Rid your home of pests. Contact Home Paramount Pest Control today for a free inspection. Call 888-888-HOME or visit HomeParamount.com. They give their all now. Grand Furniture, Live Nation, and Wavy TV 10 want to give back to our military. Register your hero for a VIP experience at the Veterans United Home Loans Amphitheater. Make their summer star-studded. Enter to win now at HRScene.com. Sports. 
as we've seen time and time again, bring people together, especially during tough times. During World War II at Naval Station Norfolk, there was a baseball team and they were really good. Really good. Ten on your side, Deanna LeBlanc explains how the Navy hopes to bring that spirit back once and again. World War II brought sailors to Norfolk by the droves, and they didn't just cram into the barracks or the ships. Few people know these sailors also spent lots of time here, McClure Field, the second oldest brick ball field in the nation, built in 1917. She's as old as the base herself. It was recreation in terms of physical activity. Uh, a lot of these leagues, you know, they had sailors and, and airmen were in these baseball leagues playing to, to keep them fit, give them something to do until they were ready to go overseas. They didn't just play for bragging rights. The Navy formed a real and very competitive team filled with famous major leaguers. Bob Feller was on his way to sign his next contract when Pearl Harbor occurred, and he heard about it. And he stopped the car, pulled over, uh, called, his, called the Cleveland Indians and said, I will not be re-signing, I'm going to enlist, and went straight to a recruiter's office. Dom DiMaggio played 11 years for the Boston Red Sox, but first fought his way into the Navy, writing to the War Department to get a waiver for poor eyesight. Pee Wee Reese, Johnny Pesky, and other superstars all passed through the Naval Training Station team. Well, the 1942 uh, Naval Training Station team went 92-8, and eight, and that was against college, semi-pro, and pro teams. Back then, five to 8,000 people would cram into the bleachers to watch the training station team play. I think it was a big, big morale booster, especially baseball was extremely popular uh, at, at that time. And now the Navy hopes to bring back that spirit of the past. Contractors have been working round the clock to bring McClure Field back to her old glory. Definitely want to be able to bring that excitement back. Uh, get everybody out to, to experience what it was like in those times. You know, the greatest generation, that, that World War II era, and, and being able to give them a feel for, for how exciting it was during that time. Anyone with base access can also access all that McClure Field has to offer. I'm Deanna LeBlanc, 10 on your side. In both World Wars, you had people flooding the area, not only to join the Navy, but to work on the naval station, be defense contractors, work in the shipyard. So where was everyone going to live? And some of the problems in this became so acute that the Navy decided to look into building, for the first time, Navy housing. And the first one on, off Hampton Boulevard was named Ben Morrell Housing after Admiral Ben Morrell, who was the head of the Navy uh, construction branch, the famous Seabees. And it started off um, a, a tradition of Navy providing housing when it could um, that, that's lasted really until this day. Casey Auto Group, home of the Casey Carefree Guarantee. I like this ice cream and I like this ice cream. I also like pickles with my ice cream. <laughs> Honey, did you hear what I said? I said I like pickles with my ice cream. Yeah, I heard you. Kind of a weird combination. You've been eating a lot of weird things lately, I don't know. Is everything all right at work? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Good talk. You'll like them both, but love our price. Aldi, simply smarter shopping. Every driver looks for an advantage, that winner's edge. That's exactly what you get when you buy a new or certified pre-owned car at Checkered Flag. The winner's edge is lifetime oil and filter changes done right with a factory oil filter and the factory recommended oil. Even the more expensive synthetic oil. It's lifetime state inspections, lifetime towing, and much more. Get the winner's edge under this flag. Checkered Flag. Fast. Simple. Smart. I'm ready for you, my man. All right, round one. We are meant to challenge now. Join the Hampton Road Show for Fun and Games Week, Host versus Comedians Edition. All this week at 11 a.m. on Wavy TV 10. When you wake up, check the Wavy News app for a quick glance at news, weather, and traffic. But for complete morning coverage from the team on your side, depend on Wavy News 10 today. Celebrate Christmas in July with me and the Tides, Friday, July 14th at Harbor Park. Watch as the Tides take on the Durham Bulls and the first 3,000 fans receive a snow globe. It's Super Doppler 10 night. I'll see you at the game. 
A dog is killed on the highway and taken to the landfill, according to VDOT policy. How the pet owner thinks that policy should change. Temperatures and humidity are going up a notch, but it still looks pretty good for the weekend. And the Super Dumpers head forecast. The centennial anniversary of the Navy's largest base coincides with 100 years of women in the Navy. Yeah, 10 on your side's Lex Gray spoke to a pioneer who blazed a path that otherwise might not be a reality for enlisted women on ships. I think that's the only thing that, that anybody ever asked. Let me at least try. That's all Yana Owens wanted from the Navy. And when they didn't give her that chance, everything changed for Owens and for every Navy woman since. All I did was kill the rule. But the rule was a big one, a law barring women from Navy ships. In 1976, Owens sued to change that. This is not a game. This is not a, you know, a feminist trick. This is a, a serious, serious decision to go forward with. But rewind to 1973 and Owens can laugh about how it all began. If you want to know why is women on Navy ships because I cheated on a test. <laughs> Owens didn't intend to change history when she enlisted. My dad wasn't impressed with my choice of, of livelihood, so I thought, well, I'll do something he'll think is okay. I'll just go join the Navy. He didn't think it was okay. He blew a top. He it felt like he had kept three sons out of the Vietnam War for different reasons, and he didn't like it that, that you know, here comes his daughter. Uh, joining. But she had, so it was off to boot camp. Physically, Owens didn't have any problems, and the test went well, except one. I just went down the answer sheet and random choiced it down through, closed it up, turned it in. Turns out it was the electronics test, and she got a lot of answers right. I went, it must be a huge mistake. I, I'm an art major. It wasn't a mistake, so Owens became an I seaman, short for interior communications electrician. She studied with men, trained with them, and fixed ships in port and dry dock. One after another, her male counterparts went out to sea. You guys would start saying, hey, when are they going to give you orders to a ship? Owens wanted those orders, but she found out it was actually against the law for her to serve on a ship. At first, she thought maybe the Navy would just change it. She met with a JAG admiral to find out. I said, sir, the reason I'm here today to meet with you is I would like to know if, if the Navy is planning to ever repeal Title 10, Section 6015 of the U.S. Code. And um, he, he almost exploded. Um, I mean, he was just, it just, he, he just, all, all that came out of him was a bellow no. And so I said, well, yes, sir, thank you very much. And I collected my notes and walked out. The ACLU had recently founded the Women's Rights Project with the help of a judge you might recognize, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. They filed Owens's case against the Navy in 1976. It hinged on the question that Sarika asked the Navy judges, are you trying to tell me that a, a Navy woman can't sit on a ship and type a letter and the the Navy's legal guy said, yes, sir, that's correct. And without ceremony at all, he slapped his bench book together and went off. He said, I'll make a decision. on." You could hear it off the side of his mic. Oh, well, I'll make a decision on this. In 1978, the ruling came down. The law was unconstitutional. Women would be allowed to serve on Navy ships. Owens says she didn't quite realize what an impact she made until an event at Naval Station Norfolk earlier this year honoring 100 years of service by Navy women. I feel like a grandmother. Look at these girls, what they're doing, these women. This crowd has gone way beyond anything I thought that, they, that was going to happen. Owens also recognizes the fight for equality and progress may have come a long way, but it is not over. I'm glad that that time is mostly over. I hope we never slip back into it, but sometimes I think we might. We have to be careful. Lex Gray, 10 on your side. One of the women that Owens opened the door for was our very own Carrie Fury. Well, we've been on Enterprise since Thursday, so we've seen the last couple of days, the last few hours, the last few minutes of these deployments. Of course, Anybody Naval Station Norfolk is going to mean something to me because the Navy means everything to me. You know, I was uh, an enlisted sailor and worked for Armed Forces Radio and Television, and that's how I got into this business. I actually did more underway time as a wavy reporter than I did as an enlisted sailor. But there are some stories that 
are just unforgettable. So very soon after I came to work for Wavy in July of 1997, uh, we were invited to go with the Navy for an exercise in South America called UNITAS. So photographer Richard McKinney and I got to head for South America uh, to go with the uh, fleet as they practiced maneuvers and operations with our allies in the south. Hundreds of flags on a nearby beach as the crippled coal drifted into this port. I don't think I've ever seen you know, such a sight, something so sad as to see the USS Cole being towed back into port on the Marlin after it was bombed. Good morning again, everyone. I'm Carrie Matson, live at Naval Station Norfolk. On the other side, I vividly remember covering the first deployment of the coal after it came back from that tragedy. So in 2001, I believe it was Chief Photographer Jeff Myers and I went out to Bermuda, and then we were flown on board the USS Enterprise, and we got to ride the carrier back into port. While we were topside talking to the sailors manning the rails, I happened to interview a young sailor named Ruben Rodriguez, and I will not forget him. What's your name? Ruben, who are you looking for? A few days later, Flight 587 crashed, leaving New York, crashed in Rockaway, New York, and that same sailor was on that plane, and he died. When we talk about the Navy being in this area, and we tend to talk numbers, right? How many carriers are in port? How many sailors are here? Each individual person is a, is a person, you know, and those stories have just been incredible. Homecomings and deployments, for sure, were memorable stories, but also those commissionings. But this is wonderful, and look at this thing. I think one of the most exciting commissionings was in 2009, the commissioning of the USS George H.W. Bush. It's something that has only happened 10 times in American history. So that was a really exciting day. I remember Andy Fox was on the desk. It was, it was a Saturday morning, and it was just a full day of live shots and coverage and just a really exciting thing to, to be a part of. Just having the opportunity to get out into the fleet uh, it's such a privilege, you know, as a journalist to do that. I hope that uh, there'll be a hundred more years to talk about in a hundred more years. We sure hope so. Wrapping up the celebrations, it's time to look to the next 100 years. Today, Naval Station Norfolk supports 59 ships alongside 13 piers and 194 aircraft used by 18 squadrons. And those numbers continue to grow. The Navy will commission its newest aircraft carrier, the Gerald R. Ford, on July 22nd. More than a year behind schedule and billions over budget, the Ford is expected to be operational by 2020. The Navy is expected to add nine ships to its fleet in 2017. In his first visit to Hampton Roads as president, Donald Trump talked about making sure the Navy has the equipment it needs. Our carriers are the centerpiece of American military might overseas. We are standing today on four and a half acres of combat power and sovereign U.S. territory, the likes of which there is nothing to compete. The president plans to beef up the defense budget by $54 billion, adding a 12th carrier to the fleet. Right now, Newport News Shipbuilding is about two years into the construction of the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy. They tell us it's on time and on budget with an expected delivery date of 2022. We have more photos, interviews, facts, and archive coverage of events at Naval Station Norfolk over the last 100 years on wavy.com. The Operation Torch, the cross-Atlantic invasion of North Africa, was partly planned here, and uh, it was launched from here. You had famous people like General George Patton was here riding down Hampton Boulevard. It was planned at the Nansman Hotel in Ocean View. They practiced landings for it on the Chesapeake Bay. And if you think, uh, think about what a tremendous accomplishment that was, you know, an amphibious landing across the Atlantic Ocean in Africa, leaving from Norfolk. And even today, that would be you know, a daunting task. And in 1942, it was quite a feat. Start with a name you can trust. Call Sears Garage Solutions. I have not seen this kind of professionalism, kindness, and understanding in a very long time. I'm so thankful that I chose Sears for this job. Sears Garage Door Solutions. Nationally known, locally owned. Wavy's expert on your side. Find car dealers near me. KC Automotive has seven dealerships right here on the peninsula. 
Where can I get a great warranty? Casey's Carefree Guarantee is applied to every new vehicle they sell. Tell me more about the Casey Carefree Guarantee. Casey covers engine, powertrain, oil changes, state inspections, and parts and service for life. Oh, that is a Carefree Guarantee. So if I buy a car and have second thoughts? Casey offers a three-day money-back guarantee on every vehicle we sell. Casey Carefree Guarantee. I like the sound of that. Casey, the only name you need to know. This fresh cracked egg from Isabella? This sausage that's sizzled by Israel? Even this freshly toasted English muffin from Isaac? These are all needed to make a sausage McMuffin with egg your good morning maker. Because when the sun rises, we shine. Our crew's preparing a good morning maker just for you, like a sausage McMuffin with egg sandwich or an egg McMuffin sandwich for just $1.99 each. Every driver looks for an advantage, that winner's edge. That's exactly what you get when you buy a new or certified pre-owned car at Checkered Flag. The winner's edge is lifetime oil and filter changes done right with a factory oil filter and the factory recommended oil, even the more expensive synthetic oil. It's lifetime state inspections, lifetime towing, and much more. Get the winner's edge under this flag. Checkered Flag, fast, simple, smart. Start with a name you can trust. Call Sears Garage Solutions. Offering customized entry, storm, patio, and side doors. Right now, take 10% off your entry door. Call for a free estimate. Sears Garage Solutions. Nationally known, locally owned. 10 on Your Side covers all kinds of military stories, but some of our favorites are really homecoming. Thanks. Whether it be parents welcoming their son or daughter home, or a father meeting his child for the first time, Telling their stories is an honor. We leave you tonight with a look back on Wavy Pier side at Naval Station Norfolk. Welcome home! Welcome!